and welcome to the Wayfaring Panda. I'm Annette. Today I'll be showing you how I have organized my art impressions stamps that I use for watercolor. And I also want to let you know that, of course, you may have noticed I haven't had many videos for quite a while. And that's because I've been taking a break, so I had a sinus infection for quite a while and was sick for about a week. And then I have been busy working with my sister trying to write a book and we're working on editing. Also, I've been trying to get back to doing my music and doing more crafts, which I don't have time for when I'm doing videos. So anyway, I wanted to show you how I have organized my art impression stamps. Most of my stamps and dies I keep in boxes and organize them flat. But I kept my art impression stamps separate because I usually just use them all together when I'm doing my watercolor. So I decided, instead of having them in a box, because I had quite a bit of stamps, it's hard finding things. So I decided to put them in a three ring binder. So this is a very large binder and I don't know that they come any bigger than this. My mom found this at a resale shop. Um, you may be able to get yours in a smaller one uh, just because of the way I organize it. So it just depends how you organize it, how much room it's going to take up. So I will go ahead and show you what I did. Now mostly what I used was page protectors and some of them are regular ones. Um, this is one I found that was a little bit different. So these are nine pocket storage page with flaps. So these are like your nine compartments. I think they're sold usually for baseball card collectibles or maybe Pokemon or whatever cards they collect nowadays. So that's what they are. But I tried some of those and small things would come out. So I wanted to get these especially for when I store my dies because dies might come out. Also I'm going to use these for another project of organizing where I'm going to put die cuts that I've already cut out or um, stamped images so that they're ready for when I want to make a card. So if it has an opening on top, they do come out. These has a little flap and so that keeps things from sliding out. Um, so if you do a search online, I don't know if I have a link to where I bought these from. I can't remember if I got these at a certain place or Amazon. I do try to avoid Amazon because I like to support local and small businesses. But anyway, um, when you do this, you could say nine slot pocket storage page, but say with flap and then hopefully you'll find it. And of course, everything's in eight and a half times 11. So to start with, I used, um, I had some different catalogs that I used, utilized for the images to put in here to organize. Um, so this, of course, is just a regular 8 half times 11 page protector. I took a workshop, so if you have any notes, you might want to put those in there. That's what I did with that. Um, some of these are a full page, so this is a page protector that just has um, two different ones. I don't know what these are called. I had these from stickers and things like that. So these are um, trifolds. Stamps, so there's three different stamps here. This had also stamps, and then when you turn, you can see these are clear stamps. I didn't put the dies with these because, as you can see, same problem, things can fall out. So I used, I put the dies, the coordinating dies, on the opposite page. And then we get into the stamps, and so I try to keep them in their sets. So with art impressions, if you're not familiar with the watercolor, you buy not a whole set to make a certain thing like these, but you buy different things that can interrelate with each other. And she does it that way so that, let's say I bought another set with forest things and then there would be another chipmunk. Well, you don't need two million chipmunks. Well, maybe you do, but anyway, this way you can, each time you buy a set, they're not going to duplicate. So this is an animal collection. So that's why I use things like this to cut out pictures so that I could put a picture of each thing that's in there. 
and then you would know. And I was going to use my labeler, but with these, so you can see it tells you what exact set it is, so I didn't need to label. And then some of the catalogs had the whole little packaging that was miniaturized, so I didn't need to um, try to cut down the packaging and get it in there. And then you can see here they are in the back and the dies. And I just keep going through and putting in different sets. So if you're not familiar with these, which um, you want to do as far as watercolor, to make a scene, you're going to want to start with some kind of basic thing, usually a container. So this was one of the first ones I got. It had a box, a shoe, and a log. Depending what scenes you'd like, I also got the tractor because I want to do some fall scenes. But you really just need one thing to build your scenes with. And then having people is just an additional thing that would be nice. Then you want to have flowers and then some greenery of some kind. So then you can see that I have some twigs. I've built this up over the years. But as long as you have at least a flower set, some kind of either foliage, doesn't matter whether it's vines or what. Here I must have skipped a page. Actually, this was the end of these. So then there's the bird set and the bird set. So all these gives me a lot of areas to use my animals with my flowers and some foliage. Um, then some of these come in a whole set, so they fit in these that, these were individual stamps where, I'm going to turn here, you can see how this one is a whole sheet and you just pop them out, so I didn't need to put them in little ones, so I just kept them together, and plus they're bigger so they're not going to get lost so easy. And then on some of the newer ones you can see these are a rubber stamp, and then they have switched to clear stamps. So some of the Art Impressions watercolor stamps you will find are the clear stamps and some are the rubber stamps. And then you would just use a stamp positioner to do those. And I will link a video of me using some of these stamps so you can get an idea how these work. Some of these are standalone, like this one. You could just stamp a scene and watercolor it, or you could color it with markers. And then here's some others. These are large buildings like um, bridges and churches. And I thought I might even use this with scrapbooking because we went to Vermont this summer. So you don't even have to just use cards. You can use these for things like scrapbooking or maybe making a picture to put on display. Now, you wouldn't have to do this, but I put my markers in here and I use the Tombow Dual Brush Markers. So you want to use basically a water color marker for these. And if you don't use these primarily with these, you wouldn't have to store your markers in here. But I don't really have a certain place to keep them. And really, mostly I use my markers, the Tombow watercolor markers, just with these stamps. So, so I kept them in here. Now I found these, I, and I'll make a link to this one. This is the Tombow Dual Brush Pen Marker Tracker. So you can color with it so you can see what the colors look like and also keep track of which ones you have. And then I found these pencil cases at Office Depot. Always get Office Depot or Office Max mixed up. But maybe it was Office Max. I never can remember. I think they're owned by the same company. Anyway, I decided to do a color, sort of map my color because then they'd be flat and then I can find them easier. So in the blue I just put my blues and my purples. In the pink I put pink and reds. Green I put green and yellows. And then in the black I put all the neutral like brown. Uh, my blender pens that I never use. <laughs> so it's got my browns and some black gray. I don't think there's a black but some gray. And so that's how I did it. And then there's some pockets in here where these are some projects. This is what I did. This give you an idea of what this is all about, what I did on my workshop. It was the first time I did it. So you can see it looks like a watercolor picture. You're just using stamps, even though I have no idea how to color and I can't draw a thing. And then this is what I started that I need to finish. So if you use these type of stamps, hopefully this gives you an idea how you might do this. Or maybe it gives you an idea to organize some other of your craft supplies. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And also, I'd really like seeing your comments below.
And if you're not already a subscriber, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. And I'll put some links below of places you can find these stamps. And also, if I find a link to where you can find the page protectors, which will not be an affiliate link. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.